Hello, I am Oliver and it's very nice to see you here on my channel. Today I would like to introduce you to my favorite tool in Adobe Lightroom. It's a tool which I really wouldn't want to miss in my daily editing workflow anymore. Um, it is available in uh, the adjustment filters like the graduated filter, the radial filter and the adjustment brush. And the name of that tool is Range Masks. Why are range masks so versatile and useful in my daily editing workflow? That's because using the adjustment filters, graduated or radial, we can already make local adjustment to an image. But the range masks will help us to refine the areas of the image we're going to work on even more. To achieve that, we have two options. First of all, we have a selection based on luminosity or the brightness value and uh, you may have heard of that already in Photoshop we have luminance or luminosity masks and they do exactly that I mean obviously in Lightroom we don't have layers and we don't have masks but the core of the system making a selection based on brightness values of an image that is pretty much the same what makes the range masks in Lightroom even more useful is that in addition we also have the opportunity to make selections based on the color information of an image. And this is what I'm going to show you now. The first image we see here is a scene out of my window here. So right behind the camera is my local hill with a tree on top and a yeah, green field. It was a strange day, dark and overcast, but the sun came through breaks, through, through gaps in the clouds occasionally. Uh, what we have here is one of these moments. We have a rather dark and moody sky on top, a little bird. I didn't want to clone it out. I think it kind of adds to the scene. A tree on the hill and uh, the green in the foreground. What I would normally do in that image here is some standard adjustments like highlights out, shadows in, adjust a bit at whites, reduce the blacks, contrast in, and the exposure down. We're pretty much there already. But, yeah, that's really an easy image to edit. But, to show you what the range masks do, I want to tackle the sky separately. Normally, just choosing a graduated filter. And to have the entire sky, I would keep a shift key pressed. I would add it somewhere here. So when I make that selection of the graduated filter visible now, we see that we have parts of the green in the foreground selected. We have the entire tree selected. And uh, now let's see if we can change that. To do that, here on the bottom of the gradient filter options, we have the range mask. At the moment it's off. We click on it and we see you have color, luminance, and there is also a third option, which is the depth information. Um, we're not talking about this today because the depth information requires an image that has that depth information in it. At the moment, only iPhones can do that. So if you have an iPhone, you can play around with that. I am having a Samsung phone, so I can't do that. Hence, we're not going to talk about it. For now, first thing, let's see if we can select the sky based on the luminance value. The moment we have uh, activated or chosen luminance, then we have the selectors of the range. With that left slider here, I can mask out the dark parts of the area. And with that right slider here, I can mask out the bright parts. Okay, when I reduce the brights, you see in the red information here on the screen that the separation from the green in the foreground works already pretty well, but the tree is still entirely part of our selection. Yes, I could click on brush here, make it a little smaller, and uh, by holding the Alt key or option on a Mac, I could mask that out could try to mask it out but it doesn't really work so this is not what we want so let's reverse that first try luminance doesn't help us selecting our sky here but we have the color 
and uh, the way this image here is separated in a green and a, and a blue layer that should be much easier. Let's activate that again and to choose the color for a range mask you have to click on the eyedropper tool here and then again several options. We start with our first selection mm, it masks only parts of the sky then by holding the shift key we can add different parts of the image like this but we see there is still quite a bit of the tree in in the mask and there is also yeah here are kind of gaps reverse that Okay, a different way to select the color of the range mask is kind of lazy man's way. We still have our eyedropper tool here and now I am selecting an entire range and you see immediately there is a, a very distinct selection between sky and the foreground. But we still have our tree as part of it. So I'm putting the eyedropper back. And here we have the amount slider. When I now reduce the amount, we see two things. First of all, yes, our tree is not selected anymore, but here on the left-hand side of the image, there we have, yeah, unselected parts, and we do want to select them. So I simply take the eyedropper again, click and hold Shift on my keyboard, and make an addition to my selection. Now we have pretty much selected what I want and I can make modifications only to the sky. By pressing O on the keyboard I make uh, the selection invisible and uh, what I want to do here is now first bring the exposure slightly down, add contrast to make it even more dramatic and moody, but add a bit of white and remove blacks. A nice dark and moody sky. Maybe remove a little bit of clarity and definitely the texture. I don't want the texture in the sky. Good, we're pretty much done with that. What I don't like here is in uh, the sky we have here that, yeah, what is it, a, a dark bit and some highlights on top of it. It's just the way the clouds were these days. So let's see if we can fix that. I want to darken that top part here. Therefore, we're choosing a radial filter. A rather large one. Invert the radial filter. Now see what happens if I just leave it as it is. Uh, put the exposure down and you see it doesn't really work like that because we are also darkening parts of yeah, the already dark part here. So in that case we are activating our range masks. This time we are choosing luminance. Make it available here. Okay, what I want to do, I only want to have the brighter bits activated. Pressing O again. And now let's see if we can match that. I just want to match it a little. Alright, and that job is done too. So we have used a graduated filter with a color range mask and a radial filter with a luminance range mask. Okay, so far I'm quite pleased with the parts of the sky I want, but uh, these juicy greens in the foreground are a little overpowered. And for demonstration purpose, I now only want to modify that foreground. To do that, choosing another graduated filter, just position that outside our foreground. Um, when we're pressing O, and making uh, our selection visible. We see yeah, it's not quite what we want because we have parts of the tree in it and parts of the sky. Therefore, choosing another color range mask, take an, our eyedropper tool and begin to select. Okay, the first bit here is the brighter parts of the green, holding shift, adding the darker parts of the green and yeah, the selection looks pretty good. Pressing O again. Let's see what we can do. First of all, I would like to add some contrast and bring the exposure slightly down. I also want to take a bit of clarity out and a bit of texture. Yeah, pretty much the contrast does 
the relevant job. And we are done with that part two. This time a graduated filter based on, yeah, again, color information. So what we now have is the star in that image is actually the tree. And uh, to select that tree and make it a little more pop, we have several options. Option number one, we could use another radial filter like this, make the selection visible. We invert it obviously because we want to select the tree. And uh, what we can try now is two options. First, the luminance, but that won't really work because the sky is pretty dark and we're taking the brights out. That doesn't really work. So we have to check on the color information. Let's see if we can grab the color of that tree only. I'm starting here. Okay. I'm just adding some of the brighter bits. And we are reducing the amount. Do you remember the goal is to only have the tree selected. Okay. Now let's see what we can do with this selected tree. First of all, I would like to add just a tad of exposure. But now I'm adding highlights and especially saturation. And we are done with that. And for me, a bit of sharpening and a bit of noise reduction, that image is already done. This is a standard landscape workflow in such an image. But we have different ways to work with these range masks. If you look at this here, I was playing around with refraction in uh, water glasses. This is not the clearest one, but as a uh, example, it will work well because there are a few mistakes. One mistake is here the flash on the left hand side was overpowered. Let's see if we can fix that and make it more equal to the rest of the blue around. You guessed it? First of all, we're taking a radial filter and trying to match the shape of what we need. We invert that filter, choosing our luminance range mask, show the mask. And now again, because we only want to darken the bright bits, something like that. Okay, let's make it bigger. And let's see what we can do. The exposure out, put a contrast in, and that's pretty much it. Put the highlights out. And with a few mouse clicks, we have only selected these bright bits on the overpowered flash here on the left hand side. If I now deactivate that, that was before. And that is after, and that works pretty well. Well, these local adjustments and the range masks have more options. So far, we have only made local or partial adjustments to our image. But look what I'm doing now. I select a graduated filter, place it just outside my image, click shift and put a filter in here. And you see immediately the entire image is selected. What can I use that for? Now I would like, because when I'm not happy with the yellow color, or the yellow and blue color scheme, I can modify the colors and that's what we're going to do. We're activating the range mask color using our eyedropper tool and I want to, lazy man's way, select the entire range of the yellows here. Check what we have selected. Yes, only the yellows. And now I can simply change the U adjustment turn the yellow into green or into something totally different, blue even. However, I want to change that now. can do exactly that. And I can do the same again for the blues. So we're going, when I, when I'm going to the other side of the image, adding a second graduate filter just outside the entire image. To have everything mask, going back to color, eyedropper tool, and this time I am selecting the entire blue range of it. Put the eyedropper back because we don't need it anymore. And now we're changing the blue. So yeah, we turn the blue into some sort of yellow and uh, the yellow into some sort of red and orange. Okay, I think uh, now you know why I call range masks in Lightroom the most versatile and useful tool in the entire Lightroom tool collection for me personal. Let's uh, do a little summary. First of all, they are very easy to use. Just add a filter, gradient, radial, or an adjustment brush. And if you have the need to make further refinements in your selection, either by luminance, the brightness value of the image, or by 
the color information you have now you know how it works very easy to do okay mainly we made partial adjustments for only parts of an image but uh, as i've showed you in the last image here that little trick by just placing let's say a gradient filter just outside the image that works top bottom two just happened that i had a portrait file portrait format image here on um, you can select the entire image and then using your range mask just to pick a particular luminance value or range or a particular color of the entire image and make your modifications. And uh, yeah, I really wouldn't want to mess these in Lightroom anymore. We're at the end for today. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you took something out of it you didn't know before. And at the end of the video, you know, there are all these things you got to do on YouTube nowadays. There is that subscribe button, just hit it. Then the bell appears, hit that too, and you'll be notified when I upload new images. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm really looking forward to see you again soon. I mean, with uh, the graduate Gretchen. Why are they so useful and versatile for my work? For me? <laughs> and again, um, for example, we have the. <laughs> Eventually, you have heard. And again, make it available. And the battery in my mouse died. <laughs> First of all, they are super easy to use. Uh, outside, just outside the image. A little trick you may... A little trick you may find. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, <laughs> bollocks, complete utter bollocks. <laughs>